Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 16th of March. The dollar index rallied strongly uh, after a midweek reversal, largely on the back of deleveraging back into dollars triggered in part by a dislocation in the USD money markets. There are no real winners at this stage in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. But many market watchers suspect that when the dust settles, the dollar could end, up, uh, could end up lower. This assumes that the Fed responds to the dislocation with a 100 basis point rate cut on March the 18th and restarts some form of quantitative easing, perhaps as much as $50 billion per month. This is a, an aggressive call, but faced with zero lower bounds, there is no real point in the Fed hanging around. The week will start with a G7 video conference call on Monday for French President Emmanuel Macron seems to be showing some leadership here and we'll hope to coerce G7 partners into some sort of coordinated fiscal response. It's unclear whether the US con Congress is ready to play ball. However, President Trump wants a payroll tax freeze that could be worth up to $300 billion over a three month period. Democrats want more targeted measures to support those most affected. Equity markets should stay pretty volatile through the week with the Dow currently expected to open down 900 points. However, we're unlikely to see a, a base built really in the, uh, in the equity markets until the COVID-19 cases start to plateau. And this is the earliest is expected to be around April time. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the dollar from a technical perspective. This Big reverse that we saw from the target area that I highlighted in last week's review of this 94.50 area. We have since traded back through the yearly pivots at 97. We're now testing this resistance area at 98.50 to 99. If we don't see an early reversal um, in the markets here this week, I'm looking for the dollar index to actually uh, challenge the current cycle high at 99.93 and ultimately the monthly descending trend line from the all-time highs here which will bring us into around the 120 130 level if we don't see a reaction here then uh, then certainly i think the scope for a move up to to 10150 10160 which is the uh, 127 fib extension and the yearly r2 so my my key areas that i'm watching if we get an early reversal here at the beginning of the week i'll look to to re-engage the dollar on the short side if we do trade higher, then the, my next area of interest is going to be this trend line. Uh, if we get a reversal from that area, certainly again, I'd look to re-engage on the short side. If however we break out through this trend line, then I want to play the momentum and, uh, and trade this from the long side up to uh, see a test of this 101.50 area. Whilst we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold obviously uh, saw a, a sharp reversal to the downside, coinciding with the dollar reversal to the upside. We're now down testing projected ascending trend line support at this uh, 1520 area. And uh, this is going to be key now as we as we start the week, our buyers are going to step in and defend this trend line. If they do, that would obviously coincide with the uh, downside reversal in the dollar. Then we can be back up retesting highs and up towards potentially the uh, the, the ultimate upside target of uh, this 1740-1750 area. However, a failure to, to find support as, uh, as Asia comes in, then, uh, then I think we're down retesting the yearly pivot from above down towards this 1450-1445 area. Um, Eurocent European Central Bank President uh, Christine Lagarde's press conference did not help the euro and Italy's debt sustainability challenges are now very much in focus. However, market watchers think it's, uh, it's a, with aggressive money printing from the Fed that can potentially support the euro uh, nascent trend to the upside as a new round in the global currency wars starts to emerge. Beyond the G7 meetings, uh, let's see what the Eurogroup meeting of finance ministers also has to say on Monday. Italy has delivered the most fiscal stimulus so far, but Lagarde is goading European politicians into doing a lot more. And we have heard rumblings out of, uh, out of Germany and France. So with the euro, similar scenario as with the dollar. If we can find some, um, some early support here at the beginning of the week, defend this 110.50 area on a closing basis, then we could see the development of another leg higher to retest prior cycle highs and ultimately see a move up to test this 1550 area. If we don't find that support here, um, certainly if we trade sub 110, then I'm looking at an immediate retest of the 
uh, lows down below 108. And, um, and if we don't catch a bid there in terms of a double bottom type pattern, then I think we can, uh, we can safely look down to potentially as low as 105.40, which again will coincide with that dollar index breaking its uh, trend line to, to the upside. Uh, sterling support uh, stemming from the UK government budget announced was pretty short lived last week. And sterling has been one of the main losers in the G10FX space. It looks as though the current account deficit is really starting to weigh on the currency. With the UK-EU scheduled trade talks for next week cancelled due to the coronavirus, the main driver for sterling should be global sentiment, with the Fed likely to deliver a powerful 100 basis point cut as of next week's FOMC meeting. There's possibly a hint of quantitative easing. This could lead to a higher sterling. However, should note that the move should be primarily driven by the possible US dollar weakness rather than sterling strength. Now, similar here with sterling. If we can't catch a bid early in the week here, this 123 area, I'm looking for an immediate move to test um, bids below 122. A failure here opens uh, the retest of 119.50. And then on, if we can't catch a bid at the 119.50 area, then I'm looking for a, a test of the, the post-Brexit lows. Um, so really watching the, the action at the beginning of the week here, if we get a, some sort of sharp reversal or key reversal pattern early in the week, then uh, I certainly would, would be interested in looking at some, uh, some long positions in sterling. But if that doesn't emerge, then I want to play the momentum and target a test of these 119.50 lows. Uh, one week dollar yen volatility has traded up to 30%, perhaps higher than the great financial crisis. Monday's low of 101.50 uh, triggered a lot of stops and came after Japanese residents had bought about $40 billion worth of foreign bonds in the prior week. Um, here the suggestion is that semi-official institutions like the Government Pension Investment Fund or GPIF are aggressively buying foreign bond treasuries as a proxy for BOJ intervention. Mentioning the BOJ, they meet on Thursday. It still has plenty of room to increase its JGB and ETF buying within its existing mandate, but may focus its attention on liquidity measures, as we'll hope that the government's $10 billion stimulus will buy some time. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen saw that rapid reversal. We're now trading up to test the uh, prior ascending trendline support as resistance, along with the monthly pivot, uh, 109 and just above there. Again, if we see some reversal patterns develop in this area, then I would look to re-engage the dollar yen on the short side, uh, looking ultimately for a retest of these 101 lows. However, if we get some closes above 109.50, 1, uh, 110, then uh, all bets are off really at that stage of the downside. And I'd be looking for a retest of 112.50, uh, these price cycle highs and potentially uh, trading much higher um, in the coming weeks, but uh, first pop of call is going to be this 109, 10950 area. We'll see how the market responds there. If we get some key reversal patterns, and I'll look to, to do something on the short side. But again, sustained close through here, no reversal pattern, and I'm going to try and play the momentum and, and target a retest of these prior highs. Disastrous week, really, for the Australian dollar down about uh, just over 5%. It really wasn't only just a function of extra bearish risk sentiment, but also related to mounting speculation about quantitative easing from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Deputy Governor Dubell outlined the possible shape of what now appears an inevitable move into an orthodox monetary policy, a BOJ-style bond yielding target aiming to control the three to five year segment of the curve. Such a prospect may indicate that the Australian dollar is bound to explore the 2008 lows at, uh, at, si at the 60 cents level in the coming weeks and months. This fiscal stimulus package deployed by the Australian government if around 1% of GDP may not be enough to offset the significant downside risks to the economy, which should keep rate expectations depressed at least through the second quarter. In terms of data next week, we have employment data, uh, which will be the key focus. But we will likely have limited effect compared to the impact of more equity volatility. If anything, another rise in unemployment may well endorse market expectations about QE package. Aggressive easing from the Fed 
may mitigate some of the downtrend in the Australian dollar. So from a technical perspective, I'm looking for this test of the 60 level. We've got the yearly S3, monthly S3 coming in just above there. And if we can catch a bid here at this level, then uh, from a speculative perspective, uh, I think longs in the Australian dollar to play for a correction could be attractive. But if we can't find a bid at this 60 level, um, the next stop from a technical perspective really would see us down in the mid 50s. So again, a couple of closes below the 60 level, play the momentum and target a move down to, to the mid 50s. But if we can find support here, get some decent bullish reversal patterns, then I'd look to, uh, to put some speculative longs into the market. Slumping oil prices will likely have a pretty negative effect on the uh, Canadian economy, which uh, will already have to deal with the headwinds of the coronavirus. The self-quarantine Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, will unveil a fiscal response package soon, despite the Parliament now being shut due to the virus. The BOC on Friday, late Friday, cut another 50 basis points uh, into meeting. Um, looking to provide additional easing as one of the few central banks with the room to do so. From a technical perspective, any pullbacks really towards this 136 area should provide a buying opportunity to ultimately retest the, uh, the 140 area en route potentially to the yearly R3 at 141.50. Any failure below 136 could suggest a false upside break and we could trade back into the mid-range down into the low 130s. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 17th of March.